Aborigines who lived here for up to 40,000 years called it Maywa. Europeans who have been here for just under 200 years call it the Brisbane River. The river that both divides and unites the city of Brisbane. For the Jagera and Turrbal tribes, it was a rich source of food, fish, shellfish, crabs and prawns. The surrounding land, open woodlands and pockets of rainforest supported camps of between 200 and 600 people, depending on the season. But all that would change in 1823. New South Wales Governor Sir Thomas Brisbane was being pressured by free settlers in Sydney to send their worst convicts to exile to what Colonial Secretary Earl Bathurst described as an object of real terror, where the worst of the convicts would be subject to the harshest treatment. Surveyor General John Oxley was directed to head north to look for a suitable site for a penal settlement. And this is where he ended up, guided by two escaped convicts, Thomas Pamphlet and John Finnegan, whom he'd come across on a beach on nearby Bribie Island. Oxley was satisfied he'd found what he was looking for, good water and good soil. Naming it in honour of his boss, Governor Brisbane, he reported it to be by no means an ineligible station for a first settlement up the river. The penal settlement with 30 convicts was set up nine months later, not here on the banks of the Brisbane River, but at Redcliffe Point. After a year, Commandant Lieutenant Henry Miller decided it was not suitable even for the worst convicts, so he relocated the settlement to the north bank of the Brisbane River. Originally, the penal settlement was called Eden Glassy, named after the Scottish estate owned by Sir Francis Forbes, the first Chief Justice of New South Wales. It wasn't until 1834 that it was officially named Brisbane, when the convict settlement was declared a town. And to think that, instead of Brisbaneites, we could have been Eden Glaswegians. Thousands of convicts found out the hard way that this was one of the harshest penal settlements in all of New South Wales, where whippings were frequent, excessive and brutal. One of the punishments was to serve time in the windmill on Wickham Terrace, Spring Hill. Built by convicts in 1828 to grind corn and wheat into flour, it had two sets of millstones. One powered by wind sails, but when there was no wind, the other was driven by a treadmill like this, operated by convicts wearing leg irons in shifts of up to 14 hours. It's the state's oldest surviving building, now under repair to prevent water creeping in and to help protect the building from further deterioration. The only other building to survive from the penal settlement days is the commissariat, where provisions were kept and distributed to the military, convicts and colonists. It would later become a land sales office, a depot for immigrants, police barracks, storeroom and government offices, and variously known as the State Stores Building, Colonial Store and Government Stores. For the past 40 years it has been home to the Royal Historical Society of Queensland. If there was respite from this hellhole of a penal settlement, it was here, the City Botanic Gardens. In the days of the penal settlement, these were the government gardens, fruit and vegetables grown for convicts and guards, cabbage, cauliflower, peas, beans, potatoes and pumpkins, as well as fruit trees, banana, pineapple, citrus and apples. Today, it is a sea of tranquility for city workers and university students. Another food bowl became a place of deadly conflict between Aborigines and the penal colony. South Bank, now one of Brisbane's prime tourist precincts. Once rainforest and prime hunting grounds for the Aborigines, the white settlers cleared the land and grew corn for the colony. Although many of the local Aborigines traded with and worked for the white settlers as the colony grew, 
the Aborigines tried to starve out the settlement by destroying the crops. Guards had no hesitation in shooting and killing Aborigines who entered the cornfields. The Moreton Bay Penal Settlement had a relatively short life, just 17 years. At its peak in 1829, it housed a thousand prisoners, but a decade later it dwindled to just on a hundred. In London there was already agitation to end convict transportation. The colonial government twice recommended to London, in 1832 and again in 1835, that the penal settlement be abolished. It was becoming too expensive to run. Farmers in the rich Darling Downs area, barred from being allowed within 80 kilometres of the penal settlement without special permission, wanted Moreton Bay open to free settlement. The beginning of the end for the penal settlement is marked by this monument on Sandgate Road, Nunda. In 1838, a group of Lutheran missionaries from Germany were given permission to take up a grant of land at Nunda to become the first free settlers. Four years later, Governor Gipps declared the penal settlement closed and Brisbane was open for free settlement. On the 6th of June 1859, Queen Victoria signed letters patent which enabled Queensland to become a self-governing colony in its own right. Exactly three months later, Brisbane was officially proclaimed a municipality, but not declared a city until 1902 and it would not be until 1924 before it was amalgamated with the city of South Brisbane, six townships and a dozen shires to form the city of Brisbane, or as many now call it, Bris Vegas.